Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, um, this is, what is the date today? 17th. She's spot on. It's the 17th of July today, which is Sunday. Now, um, we, are, we are heading into a heat wave, which is supposedly coming on Monday and Tuesday. Now, if you're in and around central London, they're saying that it's going to be getting close to 40 degrees, which is very, very hot. And um, out on the coast where we are, we're on the south coast, we are looking at um, temperatures of anywhere between sort of 34 and 36, 37 degrees. So it's going to be very, very hot. Now, I have had untold messages coming through to me asking about what do we do with these insane temperatures that we are getting at the moment. Now this is a really, really interesting thing because when you consider that many of our subscribers are from all over the world. And uh, I had um, someone message me the other day saying they're in, um, in America um, and they've had uh, it up to 105 degrees. And they've had it like that for the past fortnight. Now, that is pretty insane. <laughs> So why are we all getting so worried in this country? You know, there's spider keepers all over the world that are doing really, really well in insane temperatures. Now, we do panic a little bit in this country. Now, what we're going to do now is we are going to run through some of what we do here. And I do appreciate that I have a controlled room as such. My, my room is completely designed and designated for my spiders. So I can maintain my temperatures in here. Um, and keep it warm enough that I can keep all sorts of different species very, very happily. Now, what I haven't got is an air conditioning unit. So when it gets really, really hot, I suffer the same as everyone else, and I have to try and work out a way of keeping the temperatures sensible. That being said, what I'm going to suggest to you today is don't get too hung up on these temperatures, because our spiders are capable of um, dealing with pretty insane temperatures. Now, all of our fossorial spiders, they were gonna, they're gonna disappear. That's what they do naturally. They hide down in their burrows where it's a little bit cooler. Now, even in your room, in your house, whatever, you may be sitting in your living room and your spider's there on the mantelpiece. And uh, if it's a fossorial spider, it is gonna be cooler in the bottom of his burrow, even if it's only four, five, six inches, it's going to be cooler there than where you are sitting in your armchair. So they are already self-regulating. Now, even our arboreal spiders and things like that, they will all tuck away, they will get behind their logs or in their cork tubes, and they will be perfectly, perfectly happy. Now, so the temperature doesn't actually affect them like it's affecting us. We are sweating like pigs. I am already now. I've got a rotten earache and it's a really rough day for me at the moment. You know, it's pretty horrid and it's getting hotter as we speak. Now, our, our spiders are doing really well. One of the things that you can do if, you, um, if your spiders are in your living space, in your living room or in your bedroom or something like that, we can obviously open windows, things like that. If your room is getting incredibly warm, you can pull your curtains cut some of that sunlight out. You can leave the door open. Even in my spider room here, sometimes when it's hot like this, I'll leave the door open. Just lets a little bit of fresh air through. But sometimes if it's really, really hot outside, I'm better off leaving the door shut because I'm not getting all that hot air on the outside coming into my room and making it even hotter. So these are things to bear in mind. You have to weigh these things up. Now, um, if they are in your living space, what you can do is you can take them off the shelf, put them on the floor, put them in the corner of the room, somewhere in the shade. This will bring down the temperature in your enclosure a couple of degrees. It might not feel like it when you're in that room, but it most certainly will. It will adjust the temperature in there. So we can do things to make our spiders better. The main things to remember is do not leave them in the sunlight. Be aware that if you have them, outside on shelves in your living room and things like that as the sun comes around and enters your living space is there areas where your spider gets the sunshine 
and then it might be in the shade for the rest of the day. But if it gets it for just a short amount of time, there's a chance you'll cook that spider. So make sure your spider is in the shade at all times. This will help enormously. Now, um, one of the things that we can do with our enclosures is be careful in how we water them. Now, it's very, very important, this, really important. We did brush on this on a previous um, video, and we were saying about um, humidity spikes. Now, humidity spikes within an enclosure are far more dangerous than high temperatures. Yeah? So a humidity spike is something that happens rather quickly due to heat. So it increases the humidity within an enclosure. Now, the smaller the enclosure, the more dramatic that effect is. If you've got a fully vented enclosure like we have here, then it's, it's lessened considerably. It doesn't make so much difference. But if you're in small enclosures, it can be really, really drastic. So what I'm suggesting is that we water less. Now, I know this goes against the grain, and many of the, the groups out there on Facebook and what have you will all be saying, spray your enclosures, cool them down. It's the worst thing you can do. So go less on your enclosures. Now, that being said, like I said before, if we have fully vented enclosures in a controlled environment like we have in this room, we can get away with that a lot better. But in a normal situation with normal enclosures, especially if you've got plexiglass on the top, um, or you use tubs like these, um, any of the plastic, the critter keepers, things like that. They're not so bad, the critter keepers, because they have a vented top in them. And with, if anything, it's difficult to maintain a humidity in them because they dry out so fast. So we can go the other way. That brings up another important point. If you've got dry species, then sometimes it can be too dry. So what we can do with that is we can literally moisten just a corner, only a tiny bit, just moisten a corner, overfill that water bowl a little bit, and then that will give just enough to keep that tarantula happy. Now, on the subject of water bowls, we need to make sure that we keep our water bowls full. Yeah, in this hot weather, they will come out and drink. Now, um, in my room here, what I tend to do is I go through my water bottles maybe twice a week. I don't do them every day. So it's an interesting thing. So what I tend to do is I'll go through them on a weekend and then I'll perhaps do them again on a Wednesday. I'll go around and I check them again and I'll retop them up if they need it. Um, in this weather, we get a lot of evaporation. So the bowls actually evaporate. And because I only use small bowls on the majority of my spiders, especially my arboreals, it evaporates quite quickly. So we need to keep on top and keep them up. Now we can have a look at a couple of these spiders here. Um, we check out some of these tanks to explain a little bit about what we're, what we're going on about. Now if we look into these, these in here, you'll see there's, there's fresh water in these bowls. They've, they've all got water in them. And you can see we've also got moss growing on in here as well. So this in turn, we can allow this moss to dry out a little bit. It's more important that our spiders are taken care of. So with the moss, I get away with it here because I've got fully vented mesh tops. So I can spray a little bit more. But if you're in a, an enclosure where you've got um, a sealed enclosure, don't worry about watering your plants or your moss. It's not really that important. They will survive a week without any problems at all. Now, um, you can see in this one, this one here, this has got a, a hatty hatty in it. And you can see the top of that uh, wood is all covered over and that's because she's down on an egg sac that's due to hatch any time now but you'll notice we've still got fresh water in there that is still available so we have to although they're on an egg sac we have to be very very careful so we open it up very nice and gently and we just pour in a little bit of water and that keeps them going and you can go across there and you'll see all of them they've got them out you know this one's sitting out now she's looking for food now instead of soak in your enclosure to keep the humidity up because many people believe that high humidity is what hydrates your spider. It's not. Drinking hydrates your spider and feeding hydrates your spider. 
So we don't have to worry about keeping them hydrated by spraying them. That's a misconception. It doesn't do anything at all in that respect. Now then, if we come over to the other side of the room, we can see over here, we've got larger bowls in here. These are fossorial spiders in here. Um, this is a Nendep. You can see this has got a full bowl in here. And you can see this is a fossorial spider. So she's disappeared. She's dug a big hole and she's disappeared. And she's right at the back in the very corner. Um, this one down here, this is a Machala. And she is actually a black spider, so you'll probably be a bit pushed to see her. She's in a black hole. I don't know if you'll see her. You might just about make her out. Just about. Just see, just see her feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now we can see here where, um, if we look at the colour of the substrate here, we can see that we've got dampness here, and we've got a little bit of dampness here. This is all dry. So where she's gone down and she's in the bottom, she is in a slightly damp area down there, and that is enough. So we don't need to worry about spraying this. So you get a general idea. Um, if we go down the bottom here, we can see our white knee. She's sitting up on the log at the moment. She's sitting up there. But you can see on the bottom here, the substrate is quite dry. But we've got a full water bowl. And, um, and our moss is doing fine. It will be perfectly happy in there without too much watering. If we do want to water our plants, then we can um, we can literally spot water the plants. By spot watering, I mean we can literally just dribble water directly to the plant and not spray the whole enclosure. Now, in terms of um, watering in our smaller tubs, up on the wall here, we've got many of the slings that we breed ourselves, and uh, we've got some that we buy in, different bits and pieces. There's a real mixture on this wall. Now, um, these are all the sort of tubs that are commonly found within the hobby, and are commonly used everywhere. Now, in terms of species, we've got everything from Celadonias up here, which we bred ourselves. We've got Avic Avix, Versus, uh, Singapore Blues, we've got um, our, oh, our sand spiders, which are up in the corner. Um, and then as we come down, we've got different things. We've got Kirikans, Asian Fawns, Regalis, there's Peter Size, Victorias, uh, we've got Sabar Blues in the bottom here, Aminias, Gabonensis, Ezendamis, Redunsus. Reduncus, these are all different species of spiders which all have um, different ways of how we look after them and what we do in terms of environment. But as you will see on this wall, all of these are pretty dry. Now this is because this is what we intend to do, this is what we want to do. So you can see all of these have got dry substrate. Now we've allowed these to dry right out at the very beginning of the warm weather. Um, so as you can see, these are, these are dry. We've got Sturmies here. These are a little bit moister, but not a lot. They're pretty dry. As we come through Victorias, you notice all the substrate is relatively dry. There's very, very little in the way of um, any, anything that's particularly damp. You see a young Regalis there sitting out on its log just about make him out very very small no bigger than my fingernail and if we come down the shelf we have a, a female reduncus there and you'll notice there is no water on the sides of these enclosures nothing at all so um, they are to all intents and purposes pretty dry now um, if we was to take a reading from within these enclosures, we would probably find that they are still sitting at maybe anywhere between 30 and 50% humidity. The humidity in this room is pretty high. Now, in your, in your homes in the summertime, you'll find even on really, really hot days, 
the humidity within your space, your living room or your bedroom, wherever you're keeping your spiders, will be high. Now, this is one of the reasons that we can allow things to dry out like this. Now, we're not looking at drying these out on a permanent basis, but as we're heading into this warm weather, we, as, we have purposely allowed these enclosures to dry out just that little bit. And that gives us greater control, especially when we're on small things like these. We've got tiny little enclosures like these. Now, these are just a, a sling pot, but for very, very small spiderlings, there's one there. This is a Chaco Golden Knee in here. I don't know if you can see it. It's um, just about, maybe if I take the lid off. There we go. So you can see in here, this is, this is very, very dry. And if we want to, um, if we want to add a bit of water to this, we can, what we would do is we would take our pipette. Now I'm going to give you a little demonstration now. With our pipette, we can literally drop a mere morsel of, morsel of water, yeah? So if we can see, can we see inside there? Yeah. So we can literally just squeeze this up and that is it. That is all that that requires because there's no water bowl in there. So this spider relies solely on a drop of water on the bark like that or um, through its food. Now what you're actually looking at on the top there is in fact a skin. Um, I don't know if you sharp eyed guys actually saw that, but this here is a skin. <laughs> that fooled you, didn't it? <laughs> and our spider is under there. There she is. There you go. You see? Mm -hmm. So just remember that. Don't water your skin, water your spider. So, so what we're going to do, so by literally putting that little tiny drop in there, that is enough water for that particular spider. Now, if we were to spray, this, um, this will give you an idea. We've got our sprayer here. Now, if you want to spray something like that, this is why I'm against this sort of thing. If you want to spray that, even just a, look at that, just one squirt, how much water we have got in that tub. Now in these, in these temperatures, in these temperatures, we would, um, we would most certainly kill off our very, very small slings, things like this. They would pretty much certainly die with that amount of water in this small tiny little tub. So it's really, really important that we adjust how we do things and, and what we use to actually achieve it. So we got our sprayers for our big tanks and we can spray our plants and things like that. For our smaller stuff, we have these, like these pipette things. Um, these are ideal because you can literally just drop a tiny little drop at a time. Now um, we get, uh, let's have a look. Up here, this is this is one of our Celadonias. Now, out of a point of interest, even a spider this small, I prefer to put in a tub this size. This is 190 mil. This one, you can either have this size, or you can have these ones, which are 120, which are ideal for um, your more terrestrial spiders. Yeah. So with these, the the Celadonia is a it does enjoy, um, that one's not an hour. They do enjoy a, um, this one's better, you can see the trap. They do enjoy a higher humidity, but we don't want to create that in this small tub in this heat. So this is the trap here. So what we do is we just dribble a little bit of water on top of the trap, like so. And that is it. Now that spider, when it's ready, will come out and have a little drink from that. And that is all it needs. We don't want to be spraying in this heat. So we can, we can control the environments within our enclosures just purely by what we're doing. Forget what you do normally. We have to adjust to get used to the heat.
the heat is the big thing and the, um, our greatest enemy in the heat especially with small enclosures is water so you need to make sure that you have water at all costs for your, for your spiders drinking water but don't soak the enclosure right i think we've sort of touched on most things is there anything else can you think of i don't think so maybe no? they could comment for you yes if there is any um if anyone has anyone else has any ideas then um, do put them in the comments. I mean, it's uh, it's always worthy of um, of looking into things and seeing what what works for some and what works for other for others. But I have found in for us, water is the key between success and failure. Um, so we we just to recap, we want drinking water, but we don't want wet enclosures. We don't really want damp enclosures either. Yeah, go go a bit steady on the water. Um, and you'll have far more success, especially with your slings. They will do an awful lot better. Right. I think that's just about covered that. Um, if there's any subjects that uh, you guys would like to see us cover or do anything like that, do drop me in the comments. Um, I'm sure we can probably do most of them. Uh, maybe not all of them, but we can have a go. And one other thing before we disappear, I would like to say a massive, massive thank you to all of you fantastic subscribers out there. We put out a video um, regarding the TikTok situation and the response was phenomenal. Absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, it was just absolutely awesome. All the love and uh, affection shown from you guys was just mind boggling. Um, we didn't actually think we were going to get that kind of response. It was, uh, yeah, absolutely blown us away. So thank you, thank you very, very much. Um, we are in the process of sorting this out, and um, we are looking to actually, we will end up probably end up making our own account because that seems to be the best way forward. Um, and then we can uh, fight fire with fire and uh, get out there and do our own thing. So I think that's the way to go. That's probably what we're going to do. Right then, um, one last thing. One last thing, we've been getting an awful lot of messages again about um, fungus gnats. Now these are a these are a tiny little gnat, and you'll often see me. I'm like like this because we get them coming out. Now we get them here mainly through tubs of crickets that we bring in. They're a pain in the neck. Now they can come in also in the substrate in the leaf leaf litter that we use. They can come in that as well. Um, and if you buy organic compost, nine times out of 10, it's got quite a few in it. So we use a, like a clean, clean compost. Um, we use ours from In Excess actually, which is their own brand stuff. And uh, I find that's really, really cool. That's really good stuff. Um, if you go for the truly organic stuff, you probably will get gnats. Now to stop that, I have heard people saying, oh, you can put sticky pads in your enclosures and things like that. Please do not do that. Do not put sticky pads in there. You will catch a spider. So don't do it. <laughs> God's sake, some of, the, some of the advice out there is truly frightening. So please don't put sticky pads in your spiders because um, spiders don't like them. So you will end up in trouble. One of the things we do here is we use a deli cup like this and then we, all we do is we drill some holes in the top. You can see them. Just big enough there, large enough for a, a little gnat to go in there. And we fill this with apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar, that's what that is. And uh, we literally just put the lid on. And we dot a couple of these around the room. Now you can't smell them or anything. They're perfectly harmless to us. Um, but the fungus gnats absolutely love them. And they find they will attract to them and they'll, they'll pick them up. Same as if you get them in your roach colonies. Put one of these beside your roach colony. It will draw all the gnats to it. And hopefully you won't get so many in your room. Now you can have fly papers. Um, we haven't actually got any up at the minute. But you can put up the sticky fly papers. Put them in your room. They'll do the same thing as well. But these work really, really well. I just thought I'd share that little tip with you. It's a good job. Right then. That is it from us. 
I hope you don't all suffer in the bad weather, in the hot weather. Um, I'm going to go and hide now and disappear. But um, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you after the heat wave, guys.